fix our suits. Yeah, um, you mentioned it. Some people wouldn't want to stop the show for that. We do. We absolutely do. And I know a lot of people are saying, hey, are you really stopping the action to look at yourselves? Uh, yeah, yeah, we are, but we're right back into it. Kate Kalak up one game yep. on Legacy in a crazy final 20 seconds. We have the bands coming in. Umbreon, Blaziken, Slowbro on the side of Legacy. Final band coming out right now, and then they're going to have two picks back to back after Kate Kalak takes that first step. Legacy going after that Urshifu, which kind of spelled demise for them in that first game. So pivoting away from the Dragonite, which raises the question, is Kegelok going to grab a Dragonite now that it's available? Yeah, we're going to have to see. They had a wild game one. They really I think a game one that they don't want to replicate. So, yes, first pick. we are grabbing first that pick. Dragonite over to the side of Legacy. We're going to see how they want to counter this and what they want to bring here. We have Mime and we have Cerulege being locked in. The interesting thing about Dragonite, given that it has such good rip, given that it has such good secure, and you're one game up on your opponents, you can get kind of wild around Rayquaza. Yeah. You have a game to give, and if you take a weighted flip, if you will, where you're about 70% to win the whole thing, well, you could punch your ticket to the next round of this tournament against a monster team like Legacy. That's very true. I like that Lel is back on the hoop. I think their hoop of play in that first game was exceptional. Cerulege back in the hands of Falb right now. Mazo going to the Charizard. So we're seeing a lot of the similar things we've seen from game one. And if I'm Legacy, like you said, I wouldn't be super concerned. Like, yes, you lost. So there's yeah. some level of concern, obviously. But their you strategy... You actually want to win some of these games. As it turns out, you do want to win the games. But their strategies seemed fairly sound until, again, the final moments. Yeah, it was those last 20 seconds. And we talked about it. They had a lot to try to cover. They right. had a lot to try to cover. They also had a possibility of just them getting Rayquaza and the match being over True. right there, right? Uh, now we're looking at Kekalok, pretty similar to what we saw last time, but they do have this Dragonite. Blastoise is back. Gyarados is here. Crustle once again, which looked incredible. Yeah. Uh, defender that we we're seeing a lot of earlier in the season, a lot less of here at right. Worlds. Now onto the side here of Legacy, we've got the Gardevoir. Few teams pulling this out, and it's almost always a final pick. Yeah, it's a great spot for it, right? You get all the information you need because Gardevoir really swings in both directions. It can yes. either be an absolute travesty or it can have those hero plays like we saw like at the final stretch, for example. Yes. But that all comes down to that fairy singularity gobbling up multiple targets or if it's only a single target, it better darn well be the right one. You also want to make sure that what's on the other side isn't an absolute monster that just chases you all over the map, right? You don't want to see a Zora arc over there. You don't want to see something that's going to dive into the back line super easily like mimic you and just, boop, get rid of you here. Yep. And since they don't see that, they feel pretty comfortable bringing that out here in game number two. Legacy did drop a game here, but it does feel like they're in control of this series. If they can just get them themselves back in the headspace they were game one recognize that hey things went bad in the last little sliver of that match we right. won't let that happen again i think they can take game two here i agree i mean legacy played well absolutely legacy played amazingly as we take a look at the trophies what they're playing for as we head into game number two kate galak your purple team legacy your orange team legacy needs this one for brazil to stay alive in this tournament I really want to see what this Dragonite does. If it has the fear of Legacy to draw out that game one ban, I have to imagine if it's worth a first pick for Kekalok, it's going to come unglued. Lel immediately running across the map to try and harass this Dra Dratini as they're trying to get leveled up. Yeah, you can see Eldegoss making their way right there. Once again, great secures here for Falb and Lel. They play this top path so well together, and they're going to just pull away from this fight. They have to, obviously, Amazing. because if they get go down and get KO'd by Magikarp early, it could be devastating for Legacy. Nice little magician pluck to put a berry right in front of Falb to actually keep the push from continuing to happen out of Kekalok. Spoo evolving early this game compared to last. Crustle before nine. And here we go. Mazu up in this top path as Charmeleon with a beautiful little cape on. The Dark Lord Charizard will make its way to this match as they're going to push in, looking to pick something up on Magikarp. Now pulling back because here comes the Dragonair. Danger Noodles there. They're going to catch a reset, which means Spoo and company are going to be able to take as much of that as they can. They're going for an engage, though. It's a four on four. Swine up forced to peel back. Nice Rock Tomb to provide separation, and things need to settle down. 
SCG getting some pressure put on them, but Spoo right behind them for support. Yeah, and SCG, you can see why they banned out this uh, Dragonite early on in that last match here. They don't want to deal with it. Clearly, <laughs> a comfort pick for him. Soto in a little bit of trouble right here, trying to secure that, and it looks like it heads over to the side of Kekalok. Great rock tomb there by Spoo to cut off Legacy from their own buff, and then, of course, securing it so they're leaving with that purple buff for themselves. Blue buff, it looks blue to me, but people say it's purple, I don't know. Yeah, the people who say it's purple are absolutely crazy, even though I know it's supposed to be purple. But I know what the color blue looks like. I'm not insane. You're, we're not insane! Here we go. Altaria Swablu in the center here. Really, no one from Legacy is going to decide to fight over this. Instead, they're sending their Pokemon top path, possibly looking to score, possibly looking to fight this Gyarados here. Bob's going to have to try to run right now, although Charizard is online. And that's what you need. There, it actually forces them to just settle down because it looked like SCG and Pufaza really wanted to go for an engagement, but Mazo ticking over being Charizard was enough to say, okay, let's pump the brakes, Chief. And now we have a possible opportunity for a fight top four members of Legacy. Once again, looking to put some pressure on here in this top path. Gyarados is going to bounce and run away from this engagement as Suavu and Altaria pop up. Looks like all of this is going to easily go over to the side of Legacy. Salto just hanging out. Four players there. They're looking for a push. Spoo on the backside going to see if they can trap somebody in the rock tomb. Fall doing a great lot of job on the front line. Spoo engages. Actually kind of gets stunned quickly. Nobody catches that portal for a reset. It was a little bit of a, you know, look over here so we can peel back the other way. I love that phantom force on Cerulej right there. Obviously, you can avoid a lot. And one thing you can easily dodge is that hyper beam. And they did. Reggie Alecki just being ripped apart here by Kekalok with an easy secure. This is what you have to worry about with Dragonite. If you leave it alone with an objective, it's theirs. I can't understate its Unite move as well. I feel like it is very slept on. And if SCG is that good at Dragonite, them being able to motor around the map and almost match the Hoopa and what it can do is going to be invaluable. Nice plays here by Kekalok, just making sure they can get all the experience possible and all the Aos energy into that goal zone, waiting for the biggest overcap they could. And they're also shutting down these goals. It's something that you would really like to do when you have a Hoopa on the other side of the map. Cut off their ability to to move around. Dragonite Unite just to save itself and run away as we have another push towards this top tier one goal zone. Crustal in some trouble. Legacy continuing the push right now. Looking for the KO. They get it and they're assaulting this tier one. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Nadi's out of cover by themselves. Sunsage steps up and they actually have Pufaza jump in for the cover on the big bounce over the wall. Enough again to keep Legacy from keeping this push going. And here we go. They've been hiding this Gardevoir right here. The question is, are they going to be able to catch anyone with it? And they do get a couple with that big time Unite move. They're continuing this fight. Ledge is looking for the Gyarados right now. Big time Dragon Breath and Hoopa goes down. They're moving in for it, but the bounce pulls them away from the fight. They're continuing to push up here in the top path, trying to chase this Gyarados, using the Unite move to leave, while Dragonite just scoring in the bottom path, putting them up 201-133. Charizard stuck in a Rock Tomb, but it doesn't turn out to be their coffin today. I love the way Kekalok is playing this game yes. right now. Holy, that Gyarados Unite, you'd think that's like not a value expenditure, but just getting out is worth its weight in gold for this team. 201-133, Kekalok is grooving, and I can see how well they're playing around this Dragonite. Yeah, we have two objectives coming up right now. Hoopa is still level eight. I haven't seen how close they are to nine yet, so I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to pull anyone top or to bottom or not. We have multiple members of Kekalok looking to see which objective they are going to. You can just send Dragonite bottom by themselves, but we have five members of Legacy top. Dragonite does look like they're heading to take the bottom objective solo. Reggie Alecki going down to the side of Legacy, uncontested. Well, Dragonite has their Unite move. They're going to be able to move a chunk of this map. Rock Tomb there to start slowing things down. Mazo plays forward, scoops and scores, and burns down Pufaza. Flushing them down yet again. Burrell Gielek is on the doorstep here. Nice rule edge engagement back the other way. Hydro Typhoon kicks up all three players. Can Fob convert into something? Three players down instantly. And there's Nadiza that bites the dust. This goal zone also gone. Beautiful, big time numbers there for Legacy. And you see the importance of these overcaps, especially dupe stacks, with how close that last match was. I mean, imagine if you just would have scored a little bit more in this goal, a little bit more in that goal. Right now, they are up by only five points, but they are up. If no one scores throughout the rest of this match, we'll have another nail biter of a game score-wise. It feels like 
positionally, level-wise, score-wise, these two teams feel very even this game, but I feel like Cakelock is actually performing a lot better than they did in game one. I agree, I agree. Keeping pace, though, and unrattled is legacy. They're playing well. They have the slightest level advantage on their big uh, characters here. 13 on Cerule Edge is actually going to lead the pack in Thea Sky Ruins. We're going to see where they're going to engage as Spoo is just kind of running around and SCG not going to let themselves get caught. Pufaza jumps on Lel. Lel desperately trying to get away. If they nab this portal, I think they'll feel pretty good, and they do. And we have two members of Legacy actually running towards this Tier 2 goal zone. Blastoise has a pretty good idea that that's happening. Landing on them immediately. Rapid Spin, Water Spout, putting the damage in, seeing if they can stop them on this goal zone. And we have Wolf there, ready to possibly unite. You could throw a Gardevoir Unite pretty late, but it looks like they actually peel back from this fight. 240 now to 206 in the in the hands of Kekalok. And now it looks like Pufaz is up top. They're eyeing down this Regieleki to see what they can do with this opportunity. Five seconds till Regieleki hits the map. We've got about 10 until a basement Reggie, and of course, Ray right around the corner. That's right, and Dragonite can just head to this bottom objective by themselves anytime they want. Gyarados kind of getting an eye on what's happening with Regieleki. These two teams are just gonna trade objectives right here. Legacy is behind, so if this Regieleki walks, they could make a sneaky play, but at the same time, Kekalok knows this, they can counter it. A lot of the times when a Pokemon runs towards that tier two, they end up getting caught, and then the Rayquaza fight is much easier for their side. Reg Ice heads over to the side of Kekalok. Point advantage to Kekalok. Match advantage to Kekalok. If Legacy loses this Rayquaza fight, their tournament surely is over as we prepare for Ray to hit the map in two seconds. Rayquaza is here. The position from both of these teams is strong. They're poking each other out to find out exactly where everyone is. They don't know where this Gyarados is. They don't know where this Dragonite is. Legacy, pretty bunched up right here with a catch on Crustle. And Spoo's going down very quickly. They rabble rouse and eject in. They're going straight towards Mazo. They have a portal down, but nobody's really taking damage. Right back into the middle is Salto. Tons of damage. Charizard picks up a Unite move. Dragonite takes to the skies. Fairy Singularity catches a couple, but no conversion on KOs quite yet. Spoo finally goes down as Lil pops the ring unbound. Salto's all over Pufaza. They are gone. Two players down now for Kekalok. They are getting cooked in their own kitchen here, and the bake temperature is 350. We're going for it. Rayquaza getting left alone as Mazo's back capping that burger. It's going to go in, and now they have the advantage. They have the advantage here, 240 to 306. This is the position they were in last time. There's still time on the clock, and Kekalok can still look for a fight. Salto caught right here by this rock tomb. Reggie Alecki just being hit a little bit by this Eldegoss, seeing what can happen. Here comes Dragonite pushing forward. The multi-scale passive is prox. So they're going to lose that damage reduction now. We have Cerulege moving up, and they're looking for another possible engagement here. Salto jumps right in with the Earthquake, trying to catch a target on the backside. Follow up, eyes down. Pufazo, they're getting so low, they bounce over the wall. They're KO'd by Mazo. Salto on the backside, going to catch a reset. They're flipping on Ray, and they're going to need this one in a big way. KO should get two for Mazo. Can they secure Hyper Beam? Kegelot gets it! Kegelot gets it! Now they need a scramble and score! There's just enough time on the clock for them to take a lead, but we've got the back cap action happening, and Sun Sage num 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 chomping on burgers. How is it possible we're in the exact same position we were last time? Points going into this main goal zone. It looks like Legacy scores another 80, but here comes Dragonite with 100 points. It's going to be in this top it's path. It's going to be so close. 440, 492. Dragonite is still picking up points. <laughs> Kate Glock is trying to stop the rest of Legacy at their home goal zone. They Dragonite's coming in. They need Dragonite to get this many points right now. 60 the points, points go in. 60 Dragonite points. points. 60. Oh my god, I think Kate Lock just got it done. Put some frosting on top of that one. Let's see the score. <laughs> 500 <laughs> to 492. Oh, shot, Kate Lock takes down Legacy. Oh, shot, brother. Are you kidding me? Dragonite's the business, my friend. Oh, Dragonite's me. the business. Come on, baby. Hyper Beam was with us the whole time. It, we slept on it, but it never went anywhere. Holy, holy smokes! What an insane two games <laughs> are between you, these are teams. Are you kidding? Kekalok! These, I mean, what are these two games? Like 15 points separate them in two games total? Collectively, yeah. Because it was, wow. it, was, it was eight and nine. What's that math? 17, Nobody 17 points. knows. Wow. Not even... <laughs> wow, brother. I mean, when you saw... Imagine, imagine Dragonite doesn't grab one of those balls. It needed both! Imagine they don't they don't pick it up. Imagine something else happens. Imagine there is a different cap. Imagine Legacy puts a few more points into that tier two when they push early. 
What, what an insane was this? Series. What an insane series. Holy. Listen, I know our energy is high. I know our energy is high. Yeah, I'm screaming. But, but, <laughs> but 